bringing you the news and information you need from the people making a difference. This is Comcast Newsmakers. They are men and women putting their lives on the line for us, for liberty, across the country, all over the world, when we talk about what our soldiers are doing in Iraq alone. But what about their families, their spouses on this side, the sacrifice they're going through? Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us. I'm Joe Basikia, and this is Comcast Newsmakers. This hour's newsmaker is Janice Kovach. She's the director of the Department of Community Affairs, the Division of Women on Women. And we're going to talk about what grant programs that our state is putting, is putting out there to, to help those deployed and those military spouses waiting at home. Good to see you. It's nice to see you, too. You know, what's really nice is that you exist. Let's be clear with this, because right now, uh, these families... We feel it for them, but can you imagine what the families are going through? I've heard the stories. It's absolutely, it's heartbreaking. They bring tears to your eyes when you hear what they suffer through as their spouses and loved ones are deployed, you know, and the, the, the extension goes for up to two years for some of them. The state says now, you know what, we're not going to sit idly by, we want to help. Absolutely. In what way? Um, Governor Corzine has committed uh, about $450,000 that we've provided to one of our displaced homemaker centers. And what they're doing is they're reaching out to all of the bases and letting the families know that we have this program. It's for emergency assistance. It's, it's to cover household bills, mortgages, um, emergency car repairs, child care. We've had medical bills that we've covered. Uh, the grant's up to $2,500. Um, and it's just, it's been amazing the response that we've gotten um, from the military in helping us and then making sure that the families get to us that really need the help. These public servants, of course, the soldiers themselves, putting their lives on the line, and their families, their families are very independent in many ways. Uh, they, they are public servants for all of us. Mm -hmm. Suppose they are, like, not so anxious to knock on the door for help. What would you say to them, especially if they're struggling? We've actually asked a lot of the families that have received assistance to help us with that, to reach out to their circle of friends where they know that there's the need. Um, we had one woman who has just had everything that could go wrong go wrong. She had to have emergency surgery. Her daughter had to have emergency surgery. Her husband had his deployment extended an additional six months. She lost her job. Um, she was afraid to ask for help because a lot of times in these families they don't. Um, but the person that we have running the program is phenomenal. She's a military spouse herself, and she understands, and she's reached out to them and really made the effort to help them understand that this is okay to ask for this kind of help. Where do they go for the help? Um, the program is run through our, our center in Burlington, but if they contact us at the division, we can absolutely get them over to uh, Fawn. This is a great opportunity for us to talk about the website that's on the screen, by the way. And, mm -hmm. and this is... This, you guys are busy. Uh, we are. You're meeting many needs. You encourage people to go to that website, don't you? Yes, because there's a number of programs that are out there. It's not just this particular program, but there are, they may find other programs that we offer that could be of assistance to them as well. Phone number as well. You yes. Know, okay, so the phone number, you can go there. And, and that will also include in future topics we'll do about hotlines and different things like that. But how can also folks become involved? I know it's great that to think that our state is doing this, and we would hope that our state can be able to do this, mm -hmm. but what about the typical common Joe? How can we get involved? Anyone that wants to get involved and volunteer, absolutely contact us. We have had some private donations to assist some of the military families, because unfortunately, this money does have some income uh, eligibility requirements, and most of the families do meet it, but for those that haven't been able to, we've had private donations to assist them with their emergency needs. We are in a difficult time financially in our state, and we're looking at a state budget next year that's going to be, whoa, it's going to be, a, mm -hmm. they're calling it the, uh, the storm on its way. <laughs> How important is it, though, that we still say, you know what, we put money behind this? Extremely important, and the governor recognizes that. He was there when we gave um, one of the grants to the center. It was in January of this past year, of this year. We went down there, and the governor was there, and General Reith was there, um, pledging their support and really listening to the needs of the families. And General Reith, of course, our adjutant. Mm -hmm. general for our state. Uh, many people answering the call. It sounds like the state is as well. Yes. Thank you for being with us. Thank you. This hour's newsmaker, Janice Kovach, the director of Department of Community Affairs, the Division on Women. I'm Joe Basikia for Comcast Newsmakers. Thank you for watching.
the news and information you need from the people making a difference. This is Comcast Newsmakers. Sexual assault, you can never diminish the seriousness of it. How important is it that we're there to help, especially in the moment of crisis? Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us. I'm Joe Basikia, and this is Comcast Newsmakers. Victims sometimes feel so alone. Janice Kovach is with us. She's the director of the Department of Community Affairs, Division on Women. We're going to talk about the many rape care programs that are out there that people may not even realize. Uh, good to see you. Nice to see you. Uh, the statistics are scary, aren't they? They are very scary. It's not like we've, uh, we've beaten this. I mean, this is something that maybe some people may think, oh, this is something from the past. No, it's happening today, isn't it? Every day. Every two and a half minutes. Every two and a half minutes in our nation. Someone is sexually assaulted. Okay. What do we do about that? Of course, there's so many different things. When we think about, well, how are you going to be uh, vigilant with the criminal angle on it? But more than anything, the victim. What are you offering to help the victim right away? We have rape care programs throughout the state, uh, 21 county rape care programs that we, the Division on Women funds. We also have Scream Theater, which is through Rutgers, and that's an educational program. And then we also assist NJ CASA, which is the statewide coalition. Um, but our programs are 24 by 7. They are there to offer um, support. They will, uh, you know, go to either court hearings. They'll go to the hospital during the sexual assault exam. And this is a, a terrible time for anyone. But to know that there are people out there who are trained, who are, you know, giving the time to really be there for these, these survivors. Ms. Kovach, what would you say to some folks right now that have been victimized, but they're afraid to go to the police? That happens, you know, so often right now. Uh, what, is that, by the way, that phone number that's going to be on the screen, that's, that's your main number. Can people at least go there to get advice on what to do? Absolutely. They can give us a call and we'll get them to the appropriate. Our rape care programs don't require them to go to the police and file a report. Um, there are individuals who have come, you know, months after the assault and realize that they need counseling and we offer that counseling to them. Uh, we offer counseling to their family members, to their children, to their partners, um, whomever might need it. Okay, then this becomes a good reminder that, of course, there's the phone number that is on this, and the website as well, you can get information. But if you go to the phone book, every county, which you represent as the great Garden State public right. servant that you are, the 21 counties, you're saying each one has a phone number you can go to. There, there's, most of them will be under a sexual assault. There's some sort of a hotline. And then there's a national hotline um, that there's all, that's available in all the phone books as well. And you know they're so afraid. So what would you say, really, I don't mean to stress it too much, but you have to. They may feel so alone right now. Mm -hmm. What would you say to them? Because they, they may be thinking once they make that phone call, a lot of things may be happening that a direction they don't want to go in, but you would say it's just the opposite, wouldn't you? Yes, you have to make that phone call. If you're feeling that, I mean, I visited almost all of our programs throughout the state, and these individuals are, um, they give their lives, basically. They're on call 24 hours a day to be there and if someone needs it, whether just to talk, to go to the hospital, to go to the court, to go to the police station, whatever it is that they need, these advocates are out there and they're working diligently. Um, and, and I think it's an extremely important to have someone to talk to. We oftentimes will do this topic on Comcast Newsmakers and it actually is the realization that there is the silent crime angle on it right now. There's even more so than in the past, mm -hmm. white collar crime. It's almost like you, you wouldn't even do anything about it and you're feeling so alone and you're saying, no, don't feel that way. Absolutely not. The hotlines are, if they just need to call and talk, they don't want to actually see anyone. They're there. I mean, we took 25,000 calls in New Jersey in 2006, just on the hotlines alone. So that means that this is a problem we still have. Are you also doing other elements of this whole process of trying to get at a point where we don't have rape? Actually, yes. Um, we, do, we do a lot of education. We do outreach to the middle schools, to the high schools, to the colleges. And part of our program is primary prevention. You know, we're looking to try and determine what's the factor that causes the, the perpetrator to commit the act of violence. And, and how do we educate people so that it stops before it's even, it even happens and we're not just dealing with the aftermath of the assault. Thanks for being with us. Thank you. This hour's newsmaker has been Janice Kovach, the Director of Department of Community Affairs of the Division on Women. I'm Joe Basikia for Comcast Newsmakers. Thank you for watching.